This episode is brought to you by Justine C., who pledged $5 a month on our Patreon. Thanks for, for supporting us. If you want to help us out like Justine did, you can visit us at patreon.com slash humanfactorscast. We're talking about our PSVR impressions today, so stay tuned. Welcome to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Human Factors Cast. I'm your host, Nick Rome, joined today by Mr. Billy Hall. Hey, everybody. How's it going today? And we're happy... We're very happy because for the last two weeks we said this would be his first show, but it's actually his, his first, first show this show. time. Mr. Blake Arnsdorf. What's good, everybody? How are you doing? Hey. Oh. Blake, we're so happy to have you on the show because for the last couple of weeks we've kind of been joking that you've been our Matt Damon. Uh, Matt Damon. <laughs> our apologies to Blake Arnsdorf for not getting to him today. Oh, man. <laughs> well, it's good to be back. Thanks for having me. No, oh, man. we always like having you here. It's great to have a third personality. Yes, oh, Blake. Yeah. So welcome officially on board. Um, I know our listeners love you. We love you. We're happy to have you here uh, for many other podcasts to come. Um, how are you guys doing? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm good. Billy, are you getting over your VR sickness? <laughs> oh, no. Did you have I, a bad experience? Oh, it's not necessarily a bad experience. It's just some of those games, it was in there for a really long time, and it kind of made I, I started to feel a little bit of the motion sickness. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it wasn't severe, but I could see where it was coming from. You All know right. what I mean? We'll get to that later. But first, I want to address our listeners. I want to say... Thank you, everyone, so much for listening and all your support. We've been getting a lot of great feedback from you guys. Uh, I just want to say go ahead and keep those reviews, those emails, those tweets, and Patreon support coming. Um, the best way to help us out is to share the podcast. Word of mouth uh, travels like you wouldn't even believe. So um, if you have your friends that are interested in human factors or just interested in psychology in general or other professionals, just let them know about us. Um, that would be a great, great thing to do for us. Um, Remember, you can send in your questions. It doesn't have to be questions. It could be short stories or comments. We just love hearing from you guys about our uh, – and you know, feel free to talk to us about our upcoming shows. Absolutely. And that, that's at humanfactorscast at gmail.com. I just want to remind everybody that we got a couple interesting shows coming up. We got a video game design coming up next week, okay. usability testing methodology the week after, and then we got psychology of Thanksgiving, theme parks, human factors of theme parks. Woo! Psychology of Color, and then uh, we'll do a special episode for Christmas where uh, we kind of, or sorry, the holidays. The holidays. We'll do a special holidays. episode for holidays, no matter what you observe. Um, there's usually gift giving yeah. around this time of year, and so we're going to take a look at what gifts the Human Factors cast crew got. No, uh oh, yeah. And we're gonna we're gonna tear them to shreds in terms of Human <laughs> Factors. Oh, I'm excited about this. Right. So uh, one other uh, elephant in the room is we're trying to live stream every Monday, and uh, we've just been experiencing uh, technical difficulties. This week it was my fault for not bringing <laughs> the uh, the power cord of all things. Right. Um, it's the littlest thing. You happens. know, it, we're gonna keep working on it because uh, we we've heard some great feedback already that. They like the live stream format. You guys, our listeners, like the live stream format. So, so we're going to keep trying that. But, um, Billy, what are we talking about today? We're going to be talking about our VR impressions. Not expressions, but impressions. <laughs> of the PlayStation <laughs> VR. Yeah, PlayStation. Yeah, so the PlayStation VR, um, this has been out uh, for almost two weeks now, or, or I guess a month, I guess, if you're listening through the podcast, because uh, we record these in advance. Um, because sometimes they build up and the holidays are coming up and we got stuff to do. So we got to record these in advance, but it's been out for about a month. And, um, you know, I, it's, uh, basically just a virtual reality, uh, device that is widely accept or, uh, accessible, sorry, to, uh, owners of a PlayStation four. Right. Um, so I guess, uh, the way we can kind of tackle this today, guys, if this is okay with you is kind of just talk about. Uh, a couple different things as it relates to human factors. So setup, uh, visual quality, the motion sickness of it all, tracking, uh -huh, uh -huh. drift, ergonomics, and then we'll top it off with the icing, the Ooh, games. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, so I'm really interested to hear what the actual setup looks like for this thing. Right. So before we get into that, um, I just kind of want to let our listeners know what our experience is with this. So uh, so for me, I'm a uh, VR veteran. I yes. actually studied virtual reality in grad school, and so I've been in virtual worlds, been immersed in virtual worlds. He's seen um, some stuff. At varying degrees of fidelity. I own several headsets at home. Um, so So – You'll get my sort of expert opinion on it. Um, and then we have Billy, yeah. who uh, has not been in virtual reality until just this week. Right. First uh, time out. So if you're more of a, uh, you know, you're curious in virtual reality and you're interested in what that experience could be for a first timer, you're going to key in more along the lines of what Billy has to say today. And now, because we don't want to leave anybody out, we also have Blake here who has opted out to not take part in the VR activities. He will after today. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Serving as the control for today, but yeah. 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 No is, experience at all. He is serving as the control. He's here to be the voice of uh, anyone who hasn't been in virtual reality before. Um, we want to make sure we got all you guys covered, so we are running the gamut on this thing. So I guess uh, let's just jump into setup. Okay. Um, so setup... Uh, you know, I brought it over to the Human Factors Cast Studio. Right, right, right. Yeah, and uh, I don't know, Billy. You you kind of saw me set this thing up. How did it look? Well, it looked very complicated, but I think that was just because you were missing a few USB ports. Like I kind of remember back in the day with the old Xbox when you wanted to play Rock Band, you needed a few more extra splitters and ports. Was that it? That big, no. that black box? No, it it wasn't that. Uh complex uh so so uh i own this thing right right and so i've set this up at my house and for somebody who is not good with cable management i can see why this could be an issue uh-huh. uh, there are a lot of cables uh, i mean they tried to simplify there's one cable uh or, or so let me describe this so you have and this is going to be really interesting to describe on a podcast format, but right. you have a breakaway box, which is kind of like a processor oh. that, uh, that lets, uh, you know, if you're listening to headphones while you're in it, it gives you that 3D sound. Um, it also sends information to the PlayStation about your head movements, uh, and then that, you know, it communicates back and forth. Um, so you have this set-top box, uh-huh. a power cord to that set-top box. Right. The HDMI from your PlayStation into the set top box. Okay, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you have an HDMI cord out of your set top box and into your TV. Okay. So it's kind of like a bypass, right? If you're looking at VR, it goes through VR and then goes to the screen. If you're not looking at VR, you don't have the headset on, it just goes straight to the screen. It's kind of like a midpoint in the HDMI cable. Okay. And then you also have. Um, the uh, USB cable coming from the set-top box to the PlayStation 4 Uh to uh, communicate information between those two. Right. Now, out of the front of the set-top box, you have one... It's two cables, but they're bundled together into one, Uh um, which is an HDMI cable and a data cable, um, and those uh, are connected to your headset. Right. Then, at your headset, you have a little uh, sort of control thing off uh off the cord that uh, acts as kind of like a um you know volume control it's like kind of like what you get on like laptop headphones and stuff like that yeah kind of, kind like, of that. like a lapel type of adjustment type of thing it's it's a little bit bigger than what you would find on a cell phone um like headset okay. but but it does have a port for headphones in it so okay. you you have you have this cable coming from the headset, and then about you know where it falls, like about on your neck. You have uh, this control panel, uh-huh. and then you have um, the uh, the headphones come out of that, and then you put them on. So there's a lot of wires involved, and I can understand why people have an issue with this. Um, I could be jaded, right, uh, just because of my experience, but. Um, you know, compared to some of those really high end virtual reality setups, the, <laughs> this is a piece of cake. Is it? Is it more simpler than the other stuff? See it, that set top box that you're talking about? I didn't know that was an actual processor to it. Yeah. Oh, see, I thought it was just kind of like a splitter or you know a multi cable type of thing to go into the PS4. No, it's it's an actual processor, so it actually processes uh, okay. data. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I mean, I've I've worked with a lot more complex things. Um. 
But still, that's a lot of stuff for yeah. just your average Joe to be putting together. And well, like, i got to be honest with you. we got to put a picture up on the Facebook because I don't think half of our listeners who haven't experienced before would even know. Yeah. You know, and, and I have to say, though, it's it's almost impossible to do anything wrong because you can't plug things into the wrong thing, right? Like you right, have a right, USB. Right, right. The that's USB good. can't go anywhere but the USB. Device. Right, right, right. The uh, HDMI cables can't go anywhere but the HDMI. And the only, like – maybe confusing thing is the hdmi cable coming from the headset that's bundled with another one that you plug in like together you could kind of break off the hdmi and plug it into the back but yeah that that takes a little work yeah it takes work to mess it up like you gotta try so overall setup uh you know i don't think you could really do anything wrong even with the ikea like instructions gotcha so did it come with all the cables and stuff that you needed yes oh that's dope okay okay so it comes ready to play right out of the box yeah well i mean move camera it it depends so so it depends Uh, depends. no the uh the bundle comes with everything you need so the bundle comes with a camera right um and the camera controller the camera's weird because uh I, i will say this I'm I'm glad you brought this up because this isn't even something that I thought about. But the camera uh, isn't USB, and I was expecting it to be USB. And then it plugs into this proprietary um, sort of uh, port in the back. And oh. then um, I would imagine that's so that you can't use third party cameras. Probably yeah. um, the uh, the setup of the camera is easy once you know where to look. Right. Um, the move controllers were really difficult, like unnecessarily difficult. Right. You imagine you press the button. And they're on, and they're connected, and no, you have to, like, plug in the USB uh, cable to the PlayStation, Mm -hmm. and then you have to plug that cable into the move controller, each one separately, and you already have one USB cable taken up by the um, PlayStation VR, so you can't do them simultaneously. Oh, wow. So you have to, like, pair it that way. It's... It's That's a little weird. that workflow is really crazy. For it's a it's a little bit up. difficult. I had to look it up, like it, like switching really? to, just to like yeah. get it started. Yeah. Oh, That's, really? That's yeah. I had to look it up, and and you know that's saying something. Well, yeah. Do you definitely. think that it'll be a different thing with the PS Pro? I don't think so. I it's the same exact setup. Just I, I I'm not sure what the um, pro specs are. Right. We're getting off topic on that. I'm sorry, but I was just wondering maybe it was intended, and now we're doing it kind of like backwards. Gotcha. I'm not sure. That's a yeah, good question. You know, because like that's what I'm saying about the Xbox. The Xbox 360, when the Xbox Elites came out, it was perfect right. for what you wanted. You to had do an with HDMI it. cable versus the. Uh, right, right, right. Yeah. The AVs. All right. So before we get away from setup, did yeah. you guys have. Sorry. Did you have to use a headphone? Like set of headphones to. No, 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 no. Okay. You, no don't. you don't. But, but here's the thing if you do have headphones, you get the 3D audio as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, and that really helps with your immersion. I think it is a really big AV uh, idea because, like, for example, one of the times when I was playing one of the games, I had my headphones up, and it was a noticeable difference of experience listening through the TV. Yeah, because everything's coming from your forward direction, right, Mm -hmm. instead of all around you. Yeah, right. Give me that. Ah, dang. I thought the headset that I currently have for this podcast was actually 3D sound, but now I found out it's not. Oh, burn. (laughs) Well, would you really want to hear us in 3D anyway? I would, yeah. Let's go ahead and tackle visual quality. Okay. Um, Because this one is a big talking point. Oh, Uh, yeah. Now, Billy, you have not had any VR experience prior to this. I want to know what you think of this. Uh, Well, you know, uh, I think you told me the word of it, but um, some of the games were very crisp. Some of the games were very good. But some of the stuff there was a little bit gimmick or a little bit low resolution. Right. Um, And so uh, what what I remember you describing to me was Jaggies. Yeah, yeah. It, um, it seemed like kind of like uh, little crawly white specks at the edge of everything. Does so, that make sense? Is that a technical term, Jaggies? Uh, no. No. Um, <laughs> the, uh, what's it called? The technical term is anti-aliasing. Blake, right. are you familiar with anti-aliasing? No, please inform me. Okay, so anti-aliasing, um, and gamers will be familiar with this term, but it's basically a technique used to sort of um, smooth out these jagged edges. Uh, okay. And I think it just is a limitation of the processing power because it has to render two separate images. Right. Yeah. And so I think it might be a limitation of the processing power, but I'm not sure because some of the games uh, turned out fine. Like, I didn't really notice it as much. No, some of the games it wasn't an issue, but some of the games it was an issue. Like, um, did they call that the screen door effect too? I hear that thrown so, around with so that. So the screen door effect is... Um, 
is when you are looking at the image on the screen mm -hmm. and you can see the lines in between the pixels. Oh, uh, yeah. So that's yeah. a different phenomenon. Um, the the anti-aliasing is more of a processing power thing. And right. So it's more of a, of a hardware um, within the system. Uh, and then the screen door effect is more of a hardware uh, of the screen Oh, okay. Issue. So, so I wonder if that's something wrong with like your uh, that in between box you guys were talking about, or just a need. For well, it's supposed to add processing power to it. I wouldn't imagine that it would be a thing. Gotcha. So, so I don't, I don't know for sure. Um, I don't think it's really an issue. I, I think it's just a uh, a drawback to. I mean, look, you're using a PlayStation Four, which I mean, let's be honest, it's not very powerful when you consider what some of these high end rigs on. Mm -hmm. a, it, you know, PCs have to run like the vibe, the, the, the yeah, you're building exactly like custom. You CPU are right. stuff, you yeah. are spending uh, uh, probably roughly a thousand, at least a thousand dollars on um, a setup for PC. Mm -hmm. You know, and and the PlayStation is what three hundred dollars now. Well, I, if you don't have the move, you don't have the camera, and if you don't have the system already, that's what I'm saying. You have to pay like a thousand dollars to build an appropriate computer before you buy the headset. Ah, yeah, you got me there. What, You're like, right. A couple hundred bucks, still like five hundred plus or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, overall, like this is this is a really cost effective thing. I'll go ahead and throw that in here now. I don't even think I have that in my notes, but yes, it's a very very cost effective way to experience VR because you have you have uh, you, it's like what eight hundred dollars to get in. Like, that's it. Right. So is that like getting a PS4 and everything? That's getting a PlayStation 4. That's getting the headset. That's getting the camera. That's getting the move controllers and a game. Yeah, because it comes with a game, right? Yeah, and there's a there's a ton of free experiences on the store right now, too. Really? That's really free yeah. experiences? Yeah, well, the kitchen demo like you tried, mm -hmm. that's free. Uh, there's a couple of, like, VR um, 3D movies that you can watch. Oh, I've heard about up. that. That's uh, cool. We'll talk about those later. Sweet. Okay, um, okay, okay. But, uh, but yeah, overall, the visual quality. What did you think, Billy? Well, I thought the visual quality kind of varied, though. Like I said, uh, sometimes, like the kitchen, for example, I saw a lot of that anti-aliasing, and it kind of took me out of it. But then again, um, with uh, other games, you know. Like Batman. Like Batman. You, yeah. yeah, Batman that I did, it felt very or, – or, or the demo for Worlds feel, felt really clean and smooth. Even though I did notice it, I right. had to look for it. Right. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. But, yeah, uh, other than that, the visual quality seemed uh, pretty solid. But, I mean, I think that's just one of those things that we're going to get by having a console because it's not just one company making a game for quality. Right, yeah. And, and well, I mean, that's true in any case, really. But um, So, for me, the visual quality was actually really good. See, I, that's interesting because everything I've read, like being the guy who hadn't looked at this stuff, was like people being really mad about it or saying well, it was bad. I mean, I mean, look, for the, you're paying $800 to get in. Right. Yeah. Now, I guess I guess maybe I shouldn't say really good, but I will say that it is totally 100% acceptable and it's like if you if you guys have ever experienced like the Oculus DK2, the development kit 2, that one this one feels like leaps and bounds better. Like really? just visually, oh, wow. visually. Cool. Like and and that was, you know, not even that was what 2 years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, I mean it's getting better and better if like, I will say this. I will say this. Um, and I was going to save this for the verdict, but I will say this since we're talking about it now. Like, if you're even remotely interested in VR, grab this sucker. If you want to wait, if you're, like, still on the fence about VR, like, you're not sure if it'll make you motion sick or whatever, you know, just hang out. It'll get better in a couple years. Okay. Um, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But if you're... Like even remote, like if you've watched, if you've read Ready Player One, which I just finished, uh, I I did my research this week. I yeah. actually finished Ready Player One. Good, good. Uh, How did you like it? Uh it was okay. It was okay. Yeah, I liked That's it. fine. That's fine. No, I liked it. I liked it. There are a um, bunch of fanboys that are out there right now going, no, oh, slamming at their keyboard. Nick uh -oh. on Human Factors cast didn't like Ready Player One. He's a monster. He no, must it be was Hitler. It was a good book. <laughs> uh, no, but but anyway, uh. Like I said, if if you're on the fence, uh, wait a minute. If you're remotely interested in VR, grab it. Yeah, because like for eight hundred dollars is the cost yeah. of entry. That's just too dope to yeah. pass up. Well, really. yeah, it, I should say if you can afford it too. And like don't yeah, don't go yeah. taking out a loan. I mean, I mean if tough. you think about it, you could take things out of it too. I mean, eight hundred dollars for everything. But I mean, like if you already have a PS4. Oh it, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like five hundred bucks. And if I are, and if I already have a camera and move controllers, it's really like three hundred bucks. Oh, yeah. that expensive. Yeah, like yeah, you can right. get a couple of used ones probably for yeah. like. 
20 bucks each. Oh, what? Else? Yeah, totally easy to get in. Totally mm-hmm. easy to it's it's very accessible. And it's worth the price of a mission, you know, cuz I don't own a hardcore computer. Yeah. Yeah, no, it sounds like the thing I want to do, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyway, let's keep going. All let's right. uh let's go with motion sickness, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um right. I I didn't understand why all the games were so short. And then I played Batman. Where I was like, okay, I can kind of get this a little bit. Right, yeah. So a lot of the experiences are really short right now. Right. Um, and I th- think, I, I have a suspicion that that's due to motion sickness. Oh, do you? Because I had a theory about it too. What was your theory? I thought it was the idea that they made these short games intentionally so people would play them often, but in little chunks and doses, so that people would get used to VR. So people would start adopting VR more and more. That's not That could bad. be true too. And I mean... We could talk about that, but we're talking about motion sickness right now. Let's talk about the shortness when we get to games. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. That's okay. Um, so, I, you know, for me, I can't really attest to this because, like I said, I have been in VR a ton. And uh-huh. I, I've spent so much time in VR, it doesn't affect me the same way it would affect somebody new who hasn't uh-huh. been in VR before. Um, you know, I've experienced it in some cases when, uh, you know... Uh, early oculus dk2 um i experienced a little bit of uh motion sickness but it was even then it was just like a twinge it wasn't like not full on freaking was, out yeah it wasn't crippling like i i didn't have to you didn't need a bucket i didn't need a bucket i didn't need to even take off the headset it was just a slight thing of uncomfortableness but with this my experience was basically um the only sort of twinge i felt was with rigs uh, oh which, yeah, 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 yeah. Which is like a you're in a mech and it's like a sports, Ooh. a sports mech. Are you uh, like moving super fast then? If it's nah, like a sport thing, no, I couldn't place my finger on it. Like as I was going through it, I was actively trying to figure out what gave me this twinge. Hmm. And the whole idea of this whole uh, motion sickness type of thing is is generational. Like I remember playing the old N64 days and my mom or one of my family members watching me who are older, they would get motion sick by the bunches of movements that I was doing in like GoldenEye and things like that. They would get motion sickness oh, by watching well, it I on think, TV. I think that may have been more of a factor of them not having control of what they're on. Like they can't anticipate what's coming next. Oh, yeah, that makes more saying. sense because you're just watching it all those jerky movements especially back then. It probably Right, because hmm. with you, you're playing. You can anticipate your next move. You're saying in your head, I can move left, I'm going to move left and then right. you're moving left and you're visually expecting moving left. I see, so it kind of gives me that uh, sense of it. Kind right, of like and that's people who saw hardcore Henry and held a computer and held a controller in their hands and didn't get motion sick. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, oh, yeah, that's cool. Thing. So, hardcore Henry is a first-person movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, you know, a lot of people who saw it in theaters got motion sick because they didn't know which way the camera was going to go. They couldn't right. anticipate it, and that has a lot of effect on motion sickness, right? Like, mm-hmm. if you, uh, and and this is one of the major contributing factors to uh, motion sickness in VR is if what you're seeing doesn't match your expectations. So latency is a big issue. Right. The refresh rate on the screens. So when you move your head and it takes a second for the screen to catch up with you, that is a huge thing. So hold on real quick. Don't you, you guys were talking about movement controllers earlier. Does that not help you kind of understand where you're going to move or is it all based on your head movement? That's a good question. So the move controllers, um, Mm -hmm. those are, those are actually separate. Those are like handheld. Think like Wii. Like yeah, early yeah, yeah. Wii. yeah. Um, and the the tracking on that. We'll talk about tracking later. Um, actually, that's next. But um, no, the move control. So, are you talking about like on the headset itself, or like? No, what? he's talking about the idea of the move controllers. Like yes, the idea of what being it able does. To move left and right. Yeah, like how to how does that I guess interact with what's on your face? Uh, it it varies from game to game. Sometimes okay. you're actually interacting with objects in the environment. Sometimes you are uh, using a controller. Um, to control yourself. I mean, it also has a lot to play with the idea of, like, cutscenes. Like, if it was a very blurry cutscene that we didn't have control of, but we were seeing it in the first person. That that would make you sick. Yeah. But being thrown around. A lot of games do this, and I'm really happy they do this. They make the scene play around you, and you direct your own attention. And so, like, if there's a cutscene happening to your right, and you're not looking right, you're going to miss something. And that's okay. Um, But, you know, it's... Yeah, you'll be okay. Yeah, no, I mean, like, um, 
I mean, they, they say the same. It's kind of like a YouTube 360 video. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can move around left and right about it. And, yeah. You we know, were, you can still yeah, get you a kind of experience the movie on your own. I think terms. we talked a little bit about this when I went to HFES. There was a presentation on 360 videos versus, um, you know, directed videos, right? Yeah, Where, yeah. yeah. With the space program type of thing. Yeah, it was the ISS. Uh, go, go back and listen to our uh, live from HFES one for that. Uh, but yeah, so, so tracking. Uh, what do you mean well, by tracking? So tracking is uh, how well the camera registers your movement uh-huh. and how well it registers the um, the move controller's movement. What did you think, Billy? Well, I mean, like, uh, I of course, the first thing I did, any game I stepped into was as I looked around. You know what I mean? I mean, that's kind of the thing you do in a virtual world. You, yeah, you want to get a sense of You take in the see. whole sense of everything, you know? And um, as I was looking around with the few games that I played – I felt like um, the 360 sound really played a huge part into it. Kind of centered me a little bit. Does that make sense? Like I would be looking to the left, but I would be hearing something on my right. I could turn to my right and see that it kind of was like I'm making this more naturally. Uh, I didn't feel any like latency issues or stuttering of moving around or anything like that. But I didn't try to shake my head up either a lot either. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. Yeah, For me – you know, I've been I've worked with more complex systems, and so this was a little bit. Um, what's the polite term? It's like a jarring. No, it's it's a lower fidelity. Um, well, sort it's of only experience. 1080. Well, no, I'm not talking about like. Oh. Well, oh and I mean, 1080 is pretty good for a, for a headset. I'm talking about the. Um, there is less. Uh, technology used to kind of um, locate your person. So there's only one camera as opposed to like the HTC Vive, yeah. which has four cameras, right? And the, the setup that I used in my lab uh, was also four cameras uh, and positional tracking. And so I'm, I'm used to being spoiled uh, <laughs> in a sense. And so, so there are some tracking issues though, like when you're using it and you turn your head uh, to a certain degree, and then you know it loses it because it can only see like ha- like the one in the back uh, blue light. So there's blue lights all over the headset that the camera uses to track your position. Okay. One of the go. problems I actually had with the tracking was is uh, when I was playing the Batman game, I picked the up Batman. I picked up um, I picked up my Gatling grappling gun right, and I also I wanted to see if I could hold something in both hands. So I picked up that, and I also picked up my batarang. I dropped my batarang on the ground. I was like, I wonder if I can pick it up because it's exploratory, right? Oh, yeah. So I bent over to try to pick something up, and I couldn't pick it up because I lost the tracking of right. my player, camera. Player out of play area. And, I mean, I hear this all the time, too, like Job Simulator on the HTC Vive. Yeah. Like, you can lean down under the desk, pick something up. But if you drop something on the PlayStation VR, it's, it's, it's gone the camera. The ca- it'll reappear. Yeah, yeah. It'll okay. reappear. So but, is that just, like, uh, the problem with only having the one camera versus the four? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, I, so so there's limitations with the technology used. Um, but overall, I mean, it's it, it's good. It's, yeah, no, it's, it's good. good right? It's great technology. It I mean, sounds like, really good. For what you're paying and what you're bringing yeah, in. Yeah, that's, that's ultimately what it comes down to. Yeah, yeah. So do you think the motion sickness and the tracking could be related? The, like, as you're, oh, if yeah, you're having yeah. issues with tracking, you would potentially get a little bit for like, sure. more motion sickness or a twinge like you were talking about for sure for that's kind of sure. what yeah. i thought every time you guys were talking yeah. about it and mm-hmm. and there are things like like uh if you move a move controller in front of your face sometimes it won't pick up the lights on your headset and so it'll like reset the image oh and it'll gotcha. it'll be really jarring because you'll like teleport forward two feet and then you'll teleport back two feet as it realizes oh you just moved the move controller out of your way um, yeah, or when you reach out really far, sometimes it'll lose sense of the tracking because the move controller's out of the range of the camera. Oh, right. Man. Yeah, it's just small things like that. But, I mean, yeah. those are things that just come out with early adopting type of products. So those oh, things can sure. be updated or fixed or changed. Who knows? Well, yeah. I mean, who knows if they're going to add another camera like, capability. Like, even if they had two, it would improve it Or a motion plus type of thing. Maybe, a yeah. move con- maybe upgrade the move controller to actually be Bluetooth uh, situational somehow. Yeah. I mean, we talked about... Uh, drift a little bit but um, just to kind of touch on it again because we have it in the notes um, uh-huh. uh, one of the things with drift so drift is when it uh, sort of the 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 hardware and software misinterprets your position in space right so like you'll be playing and then all of a sudden over time I won't I won't say all of a sudden it's over time 
your uh, perspective will uh, sort of drift to the left or to the right. So like you're playing, you're playing, you're playing, and then all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, I keep saying all of a sudden, uh, over time, you're looking to your left 90 degrees when, and that's forward. You know, the, the system realizes that that's forward. So there's a problem right now with drift. Uh, PlayStation has acknowledged the problem. And yeah. I think it's a software side thing. I ran into that problem slightly when I was playing the Batman game. Right. And they have a button that you can recenter yourself, but it doesn't always work. Oh, and okay. it takes you kind of out of the action and the yeah. experience. It does. Because it's like, oh, well, now everything's, you know, centered on where I'm looking now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right, right, right. Now. Okay. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just so excited to get to games. I'm like, so the through. ergonomics, though. Yes. You were talking about that. And, uh, you know, like, I felt that. I know it's a really weird thing, but it's a little thing. The only problem I actually had with the ergonomics. What was your problem with the ergonomics? Is is the the little like rubber flaps that go over your nose? Yeah, kind of tickled my nose a little bit. Tickle? Yeah, tickle. Little it, nose tickle. I I mean like, you know how it is when you have like an itch that you can't scratch. Yeah. That was what it was, and a lot of times with that, it was just like an itch on my nose. Like it was always there. I mean, after a while, I got used to it. But I mean, it was still there the whole time. Does, Does it all sense? feel like heavy on your face? No, I'm, no, it's I would actually think it would surprisingly like light. On you. Oh, like yeah? I've worn headsets that were heavier than this thing. All right, it's about the same as like if you put on a bicycle helmet. Yeah, that's okay. that's a good analogy. Yeah, yeah um, it was about a bicycle helmet. I have a lot of things that I want to talk about, but um, so so you had, uh, but I want to hear more of what you thought, Billy. So I mean, like I thought that the nose itch was there. I I didn't mind the weight at all. I think it was really well distributed. And I did notice that the actual back strap was a little bit hefty, too, just to actually offset that weight so it felt like I was centered. Because that's where a lot of the wires were coming down and everything like that. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask you. Like, is your neck craned forward or anything like that? Or is it pretty No, centered? I felt like, like I said, I felt like I was wearing maybe a, a bicycle helmet and, you know, maybe a heavy pair of headphones. That's really cool. Nice. Yeah, no, it felt really good. Um, now, the move controllers in my hands... The move controls in my hands, the problem was is that sometimes, I mean, it's not a problem. It's part of the idea. I would get immersed. You know what I mean? Like, I'd see something in front of me. I'd be like, I want to grab it. You like, know? just with your hands without with the With my hands. And I would be like, oh, wait, I'm holding that controller. But ah. I think that's just a limitation with the current technology all around. Right? Probably, yeah. So, I mean, that wasn't really a thing at all either. Um, I mean, you have to remember, too, the move controllers are like, five-year-old technology or something six six-year-old that they are recycling for this right yeah. right right i mean like no i mean like it was really good for that though and i mean other than that the only problem i ever had was uh ergonomically speaking i guess is the term for it um is the wires coming down the wires were kind of a problem yeah the wires were kind of a problem especially it's, things like batman where i had to be standing the whole time i was always afraid i was going to trip over or yank these wires and then nick was going to kill me because i broke his precious vr oh are you serious yeah yeah so the well yeah i mean yeah the the cable management i mean the, like i said earlier it was only like one bundle of cables yeah um and that that is actually really good compared to some systems where it's uh -huh. like two cables and you but um okay so i have a couple things i want to bring up with this uh -huh. Okay, one, if the tickling on your nose is your biggest problem, that's a wonderful thing. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. Um, because, like, just, just for comparison with uh, other headsets that I have experience with, um, I keep using the Oculus DK2 because it's one of the most widely um, sort of available ones, at least in, in my field. Like, a lot of people use it for research. Is that different one than the Rift, just for clarity? It's... It's an earlier prototype of the Oculus Oculus Rift. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's not the final product, um, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it is a development kit, right? The people you were using. Anyway, uh, just just for comparison, so that one had straps that you like literally had to Velcro to your face. You had to Velcro <laughs> this thing to your what? face. It was heavy. Um, I feel like I'm in like a Hellraiser movie. It's I, like Velcro the straps to your face. I will say. That the PlayStation VR is by far the yeah. most comfortable uh, virtual reality headset that I have ever done. No, definitely. I mean, like, well, I mean, it was comfortable for me. I don't have a lot of experience. Besides now, his tickled nose. Point right. two. You did not mention your glasses at all. We here all oh, wear glasses. Oh, you're right. That is a awesome point. How was that for both of you? Actually, no. He didn't even notice. I it. didn't even notice it. I didn't have to. I didn't have my glasses on. Did I have my glasses on? You had your glasses on See, the, the whole, whole time. time. That's Didn't almost unbelievable. I mean, that thing was made for nerds. 
<laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, that's so. You can wear your glasses. It doesn't like restrict your vision at all. It Not works all. with your glasses. It's yep. very, very friendly. See, that's really interesting because I always wondered like how it was going to be with people like me that have astigmatism, right? Your eyes don't work together. Right. right. That's awesome. They just build it for people with no, glasses. No, yeah, that was the thing. And I mean, like, it's more uncomfortable to wear these he- these headphones sometimes with glasses on than it would be to be right. wearing the whole VR setup with glasses on. Thank it you, Sony. Yes, yes. Yeah, right? Yes. Three. Uh, instead of being strapped to your head, it's actually sitting on the crown of your head. So it actually wraps up and around your forehead and sits on the top of your head, um, pushing the force down rather than forward. Uh, and you can tighten it, right? Really? I didn't even yeah. notice that. Yeah. So it's it's really just it's leveraging uh, the top of your head as uh, sort of um, that downward weight. is. That's the center point, if you think about it, right? That Because you have the headset that's in the front, and then you have the little uh, processing unit. In the, it's not a processing unit. They, you have some more hardware in the back right. on that. Um, on that little uh, strip part, you know what I mean? Uh, and, and so um, it's leveraging the weight between both of them, and that's the center part where it sits on your head, uh-huh. and it fits nicely, and so it's pushing down, and that's why you felt like it was weightless. The stre- the little n- There's a little knob on the back that you use to tighten it on your face. Really friendly. Um, oh, my God. This thing is this thing is amazing. The design of it sounds the ergonomics, awesome. the ergonomics yeah. of it seems incredible. Yeah. Are fantastic. I there's, don't have a comparison, but it seems really there's, good. There's, for example, uh, like if you wanted to get out of another headset, you'd have to actually take the full headset off to see in front of you, or like pull it up and then lose, uh, you know, positioning on your head. Yeah. With this one, there's a little button that you can slide forward the view screen and look look down. So like if you're looking for your phone, like you just got a text or something, you literally just push this button on the right the bottom right side of your like uh, the the screens and you push it forward and it comes forward enough to where um, and this is how it accommodates glasses by the way too right um, you push it forward enough and you can look down and find your phone or find the controller that when you have to switch between the move controllers and the PlayStation controller you can just push it forward and then push it back and everything is right there yeah That's it's crazy. almost like a bifocal situation man you can look at this and you can still see what's going on on the view that sounds like an awesomely designed headset though to take all of that into account yeah 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 I am blown away by the design of this headset really it's just like comparatively fantastic like they did such a phenomenal job um like just because i've used other ones so right um to give you another point of comparison with a device that you probably never heard of um the invisor uh i forget the model number it sounds cool like 1990s tech Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> but oh, was, I, but, on your face. but was that the Virtual Boy? <laughs> no, 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 no. This was this was '90s tech, but this was this was probably equivalent to the DK2. Uh-huh. Um, so it was like sixteen thousand dollars in the '90s, Whoa. Uh, or something like that. It was a really expensive Can't headset at the time. One. Um, so uh, just to give you an example, this one also sits on your head, but it kind of uses straps over the top. And then you use a knob to adjust it up and down. Crank and then, that sucker down. So, this like, sounds like yeah. a thing from Saw. No, oh. This thing, this, uh, the PlayStation VR is by far the most ergonomically sound headset that I have ever had the pleasure to put really? on my face. Huh. Nick Room's stamp of approval. Stamped of Gets approval. Gets my stamp of approval. Take it from someone who's been in a ton of virtual environments and... Played around with a lot of headsets. No, I mean, like, all in all, it was great. The weight wasn't too much. It didn't feel like I was moving my arms or flailing around. The tracking motion, even though it was limited, it was still fine where it is. I mean, everything I'm saying here about the PlayStation VR is nitpicky. But, I mean, it's a solid thing. And yeah, the best like... solid thing about it is the games. All right, yeah, Let's. here's the main event. Right. This is what everybody wants to know. Yeah, the games. buddy. The games. Everyone just lost the game. We are talking about... What are you, 12? No. <laughs> Come on. All right, so uh, Batman, Arkham VR. Yes. Okay. Um, nerd point aside, I hated that story. Oh, really? Okay, let's... Oh, I hated oh. it. I mean, like, I know, I know that's not what we're talking about. I just want to make a point. Hated that story. Hold up. I loved the story. Oh, my God. Uh-oh. You savage monster. Okay, why why okay, let's not let's not get into spoiler Terry cuz I don't I, it's it is something that you have to experience. Yeah, we can't I can't talk about it without spoiling. Right, I don't need it. you guys and ruining Batman for it's me. It's the worst. <laughs> no, it's it's the worst Batman story. It's the best Batman story. I would have rather played El Bato. 
All right. A Mexican version of Batman. So, so let's as we're talking about the games, let's go into like a short description, and uh-huh. then we'll just talk about our experience. Okay, so Batman Arkham VR. Right. This is a one-hour-long detective story where you investigate the murder of a character in the Batman universe. As what Batman. Up? As Batman. So this is not a punching fighting game. This is a you're, you're Bruce Wayne as Batman looking for clues, detective Batman. But you were saying uh, earlier, Billy, you got to use the grappling hook and that kind of stuff, right? Well, I mean, like, think about it this way. Remember, uh, did you play Arkham City? Yeah. Okay, Arkham City, remember how you had to uh, do those little investigations and replay movies and things yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind it's of like, like an hour-long hour long experience of, of that. So, so yeah, they use they use three tools. Uh, you have the batarang, you have the grappling hook, and you have this sort of scanner device that okay. allows you to mode type of investigate. And you use the uh, – it's really clever. that You use the um, – the grappling hook to to get around, mm-hmm. and, yeah, and it kind of blacks out the screen and then teleports you, and that's how they get around the motion sickness part. Yeah, I was about to say, you probably lose your mind, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it shows it shows you like a brief little glimpse of your moving, and then it blacks out, and then you're there. Okay, think about yeah. kind of like when they it's, jump into light speed, and the the stars get a little bit longer, and then it goes. Yeah, that's kind of the idea. Yeah, Batman light speed, right? Right. No, it's actually really well done. I I really like the design of this game. Um. That's one of the things I wanted to say about this game. This game is probably the only the it is the it did the best job of getting me in the immersion. It got it did the best job of getting me in the immersion, and it was probably the most um, in depth that I did. You know, right? Yeah, you actually, the most. yeah, you actually sat there and played the entire game in one sitting. Right. Yes, I did. Oh, nice. So, and uh, you want to talk about time dilation here? Oh, yes, I would <laughs> love to talk about it, because this was the thing that it happened the most in. So are we talking about time dilation? What do you mean? So, so I traveled back in time. No, so, time in time. so are you familiar with the concept that, you know, if you're, like, sitting on a, if you're on a date with a beautiful woman, yeah, time so goes quite. by so quickly. Yes. And then if you're sitting in class waiting for the bell to ring, time goes by so slowly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Being in VR is like being on a beach with a beautiful woman (laughs) or a beautiful (laughs) member of the gender that you are attracted to. Yes. Um, All right. Cool. I got it. No, because because Billy was in there for like an hour and a half. Yeah. um, And he gets out and he's like, what time is it? And I'm like, it's 830. And he's like, what? How is it 830? Where have I been? Yeah, right. right? And so, yeah, I mean, and he thought it was like 20 minutes. He honestly thought that this experience was like 20 minutes long. That's so good. Yeah, like at one point, he left to go get snacks, and when he came back, I was like, what happened? All right, Nick? And he was like, yeah. I was like, did you already get back? Yeah. Did you run? You know, that was the thing. I didn't even notice that he was gone for the, what, 20, 30 minutes that he was probably gone? Yeah, I, like. Total I immersion. That's crazy. Went, got, I, w- I went to the store. I got like a full meal. I ate the full meal. I read a comic. And then he was like, I'm done. Now what's up? Yeah. I thought <laughs> we had more to do. That's awesome. No, it was it was really interesting um, for uh, sure. But I mean, like, that was the thing. I felt the most immersed. Like, Rocksteady's the one who actually made the Batman VR, right? Oh, yeah. nice. Okay. Yeah, and Rocksteady. so, like, I felt like it. Like, you get dressed as Batman. Oh, yeah. That you know? scene is really cool. You get, you move things around, you do things. And it and, and it gives you the impression that I would like to do the story a couple more times just because there were things that I didn't see or I did see that I noticed or didn't notice that I could interact with. The only problem is, couldn't punch a dude in the face. Yeah, but at least that sounds like some awesome replay value. It does have a great amount of replay value. Plus, it has I a don't secondary so. mode. I don't think it? so. Oh no, it does have a secondary mode where you're like investigating all the the Riddlers. Well, I don't think it has replay way. value. I have it not put the thing for, on. It yeah. has n- enough replay value for a twenty dollar game. It's twenty bucks. Okay, it's you twenty go- bucks. I got probably four hours out of it. So I mean, you that's know. a good deal. I I mean it depends on how you value your time. A movie is ten bucks, um, and d- well depending on where you live, a movie's ten bucks, and that's about an hour and a half. Yeah. So if you if you do it by that standard, yeah, you're getting a little bit more for your buck. Bang for your buck. Um, but yeah, no, I I thought it was the best visually. I think um, it was a little short, but I think that's a good thing. I think these experiences need to be short because, fun fact, I think like twenty percent of the population will experience motion sickness no matter what you do. Right, 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 right. No matter what you do. And now where is that coming from? Uh 
scientific studies. I will have to find my source. <laughs> no, I, it's like one of those things when you work around a topic enough, you just kind of. Oh, is that just these... like something in VR specifically? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. VR specifically. Thought, it's not I like. I thought it was even farther than that. Like a lot of people. Of the world's get, gonna get a lot of people get motion sickness. It's just hey, there's a lot of people, people that are better at handling it than others. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm horrible at it. Yeah, like I get a little bit of motion sickness sometimes with certain things like on boats and stuff, but, you know, I handle it fine. Yeah, yeah. All okay, right. so let's, let's go to the next. But overall, Batman Arkham VR, I would say, is a great game. It's good. Uh, it's, and it was the best visually, I think. Too. I think it was the best visually, and it was probably the best. Um, oh, sorry. Before we move on to the next game, I just want to say, uh, spoiler, Bruce uh, Wayne's parents die. Everybody kind of knows this, right? Right, Like, right. this is not, like, a big spoiler. Oh, yes, yes. Do, okay, so I was talking. watch it? I was talking with Billy about this. So, so okay, <laughs> this this scene. Okay, you've seen Bruce Wayne's parents die a million times All the in time. movies, TV, yeah. comic books. You've seen it a million times. Yes. You've never lived it. Ah, uh, dude. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Oh. And the mom puts oh, out your hand and you put amazing. your hand out to grab her hand. And you're walking down the way. You All see sudden, it happen there. Yeah. All of a sudden, there's this robber that's right right in front of you. And I'm like, stand Joe back, Bruce. Cool. Stand back, Bruce. And then. Like, here, you can have whatever you want. And then, boom, right in front of you. Shoots your parents dead. You're like, oh, my God. I've never experienced it. It's so visceral. Like, like this experience. Like, they're falling around you. Like, your dad falls on your left. Your mom falls on your right. You can oh. see them. Do you see the, the pearls bouncing? And that's the best thing. Like The pearls bounce, yeah. I, I wouldn't say this is the best thing, but it was the craziest thing. Like, uh, I forget what Bruce's dad's name Thomas, Thomas Wayne. Thomas Wayne gets shot. He yeah. gets shot. And you watch him die, and you're just, you're like so in shock that you're watching him die. And then you hear, like, for me, at least this was my experience because I wasn't watching mom. I look down, and then I hear the gunshot, and all of a sudden, mom's on the floor, too. I'm like, oh, oh my God. man. I and then never. Joe Cool comes right up to your face and be like, that's what you get for being a hero. Yeah. And he's right in your face. from VR. Holy and the, cow. And, and the way they did it, I, I want to bring this up. The way they did Thomas's death, Thomas Wayne's death, is that he falls. Like, if you're looking forward, he falls off your vision. Oh, man. So you have to physically Like, turn. look and watch it. That's yeah. so cool. You can watch it. And I really feel like they slowed it down a little bit for that. Maybe. Yeah, I Maybe. feel like the fall was that a little That sounds really slow. cinematic. That's cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. good. It was good. Uh, it was it's such a visceral experience. Like, mm-hmm. You've you've seen it happen a million times, but you never you just feel it in your heart. It. Yeah, you never experienced it, oh, <laughs> and it's so hard to explain to somebody who's like never been in VR what VR is like. Um, and maybe Billy, you can talk a little bit about that experience because, and, and Blake, because you've never been in VR, it's hard for nope. me to tell you what VR is like because I can say, yeah, it's so cool. It takes up your peripheral vision. It takes up your auditory senses. You're not. It, it, Growing up and nowadays, you've been bombarded with what VR is like, but the experience of it is humbling, kind of. You know, like the idea of it is is like, okay, this is what I expect. This is what I get. But the idea of it is you don't really realize this idea of losing yourself into it. No, it's the really hard for me to is. imagine that. That immersion yeah, is that really happens. hard because, I mean, like we don't do that with movies as much anymore. Right. Video games can kind of do it to us, but it's more like the idea of compassion, like we care. But the idea of feeling anger or fear or any of those sort of things for long periods of time, that uneasiness of like, where am I? What am I doing? Where you forget that you're playing a game for just a split second. That's one of the things that VR can give you. That's yeah, crazy. it's it's literally like living an experience. It's uh-huh. oh, so crazy. All right, let's talk about some more games because okay. uh, we got a lot to cover. Um, Until Dawn, Rush of Blood. Now I didn't play these. No, this one, uh, this one was mine. Yeah. Um, so we we all tried out different things. Um, but Until Dawn, Rush of Blood. So this was an on rails carnival roller coaster where you shoot clowns. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds like a nightmare we, that I've had. Uh, How's that p- the human factors cast like to stay topical? Okay, so we talked <laughs> oh, about yeah. we talked about fear last week. This was scary. This thing was oh my gosh, this is terrifying. Made you feel that uneasy. We talked about the different last week. Like we talked about like the di- the varying degrees of like fear yeah. and the different words. Uh, and to our listeners, if you haven't listened to that episode, go back and listen to it because it was terrifying. Nice. This. This game, like, I don't like horror games just in general, and this is speaking a lot to this game. 
Um, I don't like horror games in general just because I'm like, ah, oh, that's a little creepy, whatever. This was terrifying. I was on a roller coaster and like these clowns are jumping out at me from everywhere and I'm just sitting there in the chair. My girlfriend's going like looking at me like I'm a crazy person. And <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm going, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. And I'm like completely overreacting to this. But it, it felt so real. That's scary. And, um, you know, uh, here's here's the craziest part. I don't like playing horror games, but I can't wait to get back into this game. Are you really? serious? Yes. It's got crazy clowns. It does. And but I mean it's 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 that presence. And it, like it scared me so good. <laughs> it scared me so I good. I want you to scare me so good. I want to go back and do more. Like it's it, <laughs> I need more scare. Yeah, it's it's weird cuz it scared me in a way that nothing else does. You watch a movie, whatever. Right. You know it's fake. You can take yourself out of it. When you're completely immersed in an environment, you feel like it's real and it's terrifying and it's something that you don't experience normally. You're like, oh, that's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, in the notes you've got that you play with a cold fan blowing on you. Oh yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, so it takes place outside, right? At some points, um, and so like I had a cold fan blowing on me, and so it felt like I was actually moving forward on this roller coaster. Oh my! And like I was in shorts and a t-shirt, and so like it was <laughs> felt like you were going. It was really league. chilly. Oh shit! Oh that's man! Crazy. I, so how well, long is that game altogether? Oh, I don't know. I only beat the first level, but I can't wait to go back and oh, play there's more. There's multiple levels to it. Oh, okay. Oh okay. man! There's like nine levels or something, and what? it took me like 20, 20 minutes to get through the first one. So yeah, it's short experiences. Short, though. short experiences. Yeah, but I think it's meant to. That's I think great. it's meant to be played one level I think that's at a time. A, I think that's a good idea. All right. So Thumper, this was another one that I Thumper. tackled. Um, this was a on-rails rhythm violence game. Rhythm violence. Now, what does yeah. that mean? So so it's uh, it's kind of like a um, – uh, like one of those music games where you press the button to the beat. Um, but this one uh, – I've heard a lot of rave and uh, positive review about this game. It didn't impress me so much. It was – it's – um. It's like a uh, – it's you kind of just press the button to the beat. But, I mean, there's so many variations on how you can press the button. Like you press the button and up at the same time. You press the button and then right. You press the button and left. But it's it gradually gets to that point. Um, now, the violence part of it comes in. You have to beat these bosses. Okay. Uh, and you do that by hitting the right combination. Okay, yeah. Now, so it's kind of like a dance dance. I will say, like – yeah, kind of. I will say that the bosses were kind of cool looking. Like they – when you play it in regular mode, it's just a face on the screen. But when you're playing in VR, you get you really get the sense of scope. You look up and you see this huge like creature that you have to attack by sending waves into it. Mm-hmm. It was okay. It was okay. 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 It was unique because it's modifying you know just one button. It's still challenging. Right. 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 Um. Uh. Yeah. Like, um, just bottom line, like the VR version just gives you that scope. Uh, I I wasn't. I mean, I'm assuming that we're going to see a lot of that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, hey, that's trying to do something like new and innovative, right? Like, yeah. Right. I mean, like and making it crazy. We start. We all start out simple, you know. Yeah, I mean, early sure. video games was just brick and ball. You know what I mean? All right. Yeah, Let's uh, talk about some of the things that you did, Billy. Um, we'll get to PSVR worlds in a minute, but Eve Valkyrie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wanted to know about this one so bad. Uh, are you an Eve fan? Yeah, I'm a big Eve fan. What faction? Mimitar? Galante? Galante. I think oh, it's the you s- <laughs> This is a favorite Hatering. show. I refuse to cuss. But no, Mimitar for life. No, I'm... Okay, sorry. Back to the VR of it. The VR Eve Valkyrie felt You tried great. this one. Yes, I did. And it felt great. Why? One, I like the... I think it did play in the fact that I like the air, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the the theme, the lore, the world. The itself. world. Mm-hmm. But you know what the thing about it that really gave me the most interaction is I love those arcade games where you get to sit in a cockpit. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And they're basically giving you a nonstop version of a cockpit in a game. Oh, that's really like cool. Like when I got hit by Blaster Fire, I felt the rocking – I mean, even though it was just sound and visual, I felt or or the vibration of the controller. I noticed that my body jerked and that my movement shifted, like I was being pushed to the side. What? And when I would lock onto a target, I felt the idea of like leading the target, shooting at it, and things like that. It was so rewarding. That sounds like an awesome experience. It was an awesome experience. It was rewarding. It was fun, and it's like having a little arcade cabinet, full console thing in the room with you and that was the best thing about it 
I mean, it was short because it was a demo, but I can understand why you wouldn't want to do 20 or 30 missions with that. Weaving, I weave through giant cruisers. I could look up and see the giant cruisers. I could look at the left and the right and see my wingmen. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, the idea of immersion. Yeah. The it, idea that I had options. It's really crazy. So the way it starts out, you're actually in a cockpit in a bigger ship. And yeah. uh, you're in your ship, in your ship, um, and uh, you're – it fades in. You're looking around, and you're like, "Oh wow, I'm skinny." Okay, and then, <laughs> I forgot about that part. Yeah. <laughs> so you're looking around, and you're like, "Oh wow, I'm in a cockpit." Yeah. And you see like the frost on the glass. You see all these things that bring you into the environment. You're you're like blown away that you're in a cockpit, and then you hear the computer generated voice. You're like, uh, "Launching in five. Long. Yeah. It doesn't Three, even give you a minute two, to actually figure out. One. You're just out so, there. Oh, and then man. it shoots you out of this thing. And um, human factors, people will know global opt- optical flow rate. Uh, your gopher. Uh, that's the speed at which things I know. Yeah. Your gopher. Yeah. That's, your gopher? No, that's so uh, global optical optical flow rate. Wow, I can't even talk tonight. Um, global optical flow rate. That is the rate at which things are coming at you. So mm-hmm. basically what I'm saying is it shoots you through this tunnel. Mm-hmm. And this, it, you're just going so fast through this tunnel, and you see this hole at the end of the tunnel, and you're like, "Okay, I'm hitting the hole, I'm hitting the hole, I'm hitting the hole," and all of a sudden you're out of the tunnel, and the sense of scope is just amazing because you really, are no longer in a tunnel; you're in space. space. Yeah, yeah, it really gives awesome. you a sense of like of 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 of. of of wide um, scope of a feeling, you know, it's almost like that moment in uh, 2001, a space odyssey, you know, like, da, 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 da. Like you're finally in space. Yeah. It was really great. And then you see all the other ships around you and you feel small, but you're yeah, like, you're going. Yeah. You're, these are behemoths you go, around you. You go Whoa. from feeling like so powerful. Cause you're like, Oh, I'm in my own spaceship. This is really cool. And then, boom, you're out, and you're like, "Oh my god, I am <laughs> it nothing, is tiny man." Oh, like, yeah, geez. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that was cool. Yeah, it was a great little like idea of a hero fantasy, you know, because the idea of it is, is as you play through, you you feel like a hero. It gives you that power back as you're taking on bad guys and things like that, weaving through all these like different types of convoys and large battleships. It was really a great experience and i think that's the main thing about about uh, vr is it's a great experience speaking of experiences let's talk about your experience with the kitchen demo <sighs> oh man okay did you cook no <laughs> <laughs> it's a horror game it's final what? fan it's resident evil 6 oh i thought oh, i was serious i yeah. thought i was gonna be making brownies or something that's what i thought he was like you need to the try kitchen. the kitchen and i'm like okay so you wake up with a camera at your face. Did you play the Resident Evil six, uh, Resident Evil demo? Yeah, is this is really scary. Me they made this into a game for uh, VR. I'm not sure. Okay, I think it's so seven. you don't you start. Remember the two guys that went in first? Yeah, you're playing one of the guys. Okay, so you're playing one of the guys in there, and your hands are bound, and you have a camera in front of you, and you're just like, oh, that's not weird. And then you move your controller up and down, and you're like, "Uh, I can't get out of this thing. You're trying to pull it apart. You're hitting buttons. You're trying to get out. You can't move, but you can move your hands up and down. The camera's in front of you. You move your hands out. You knock over the camera. Your buddy wakes up, tries to cut you out. And then I'm not going to ruin it for the rest of you, but what ends following is horrific. Ah. However, this is where that anti-aliasing came in. Right. Oh, shoot. So it kind of took him out of it. I really did. It really took me out of it a lot. And I think it was because I don't think that it was the game is designed or felt like it was designed for VR. Does oh, really? Sense? Like the room of the kitchen I think the looks experience, bigger. I think the experience was designed for VR, but I don't think the environment was. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. The yeah. environment wasn't because that's what it felt like. I felt like I was... It couldn't. I couldn't get scared. I couldn't get tripped out, and I wanted to be scared, and I wanted to be tripped out, but I couldn't do it because every time I looked at a cabinet uh, or anything on the map, that anti-aliasing was going on. Uh, okay, so just that was lost the worst that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's move to PSVR Worlds. Okay. Because this is one that I tried. You tried some of this, uh, Billy, but I don't think you got the full experience. So uh, I love that ball. This is a family show. <laughs> We're going to be talking about playing with balls. Um, Family show. 
So PSVR Worlds is a collection of virtual reality experiences kind of packaged together um, in this VR bundle. Oh, so does it come with it automatically? Uh, yeah, in it's the kind bundle. of like the okay. Wii Play of this thing. Gotcha. Yeah, kind of, kind yeah, of, but yeah. better. Yeah, Much no, better. I mean... I mean, um, leaps and bounds better. Yeah, so so there's five games that it comes with. It comes with right. Ocean Descent, mm-hmm. uh, which is you're kind of in an underwater cage and you're getting sent to the flo- to the floor of it to of the of the ocean to investigate a seismic disturbance. Yeah, it would have um, been really cool to play. Yeah, so uh, uh, I, what's up? Uh oh, I, I feel like Nick didn't let Billy play yeah, this one. You, no, I. Was going to, but I left the disc at home. He oh, left the disc no. at home. I know. Yeah. I brought everything. I even brought the case. Anyway. Yeah, right. Uh, so, <laughs> so it's okay because I've gone through these and I can talk about them. No, no, and no. That's fine. You guys are welcome over anytime to try this. All right. Um, so here we go. Party so, um, so there's Ocean Descent. There was VR Luge, which is basically just luging down a hill. Well, it seems um, like it would be a little bit boring and nauseous inducing. Uh, I'll talk about it. That'd be nuts. Uh, Danger Ball. Uh, which is basically like 3D Pong. Yeah. Um, London Heist, which is literally just a heist in London where you go to steal a diamond. That would have been so. What? That would that sounded really cool. And me. then uh, Scavenger's Odyssey, which is you play as an alien that has an encounter with beings from another universe. What's this thing on the show notes that says you pilot a mech? I'll talk about it. I'm gonna go through and talk about these one by one. So Ocean Descent. So this one was a neat little experience, and this is something that I would show to everybody uh, if it was just a little bit shorter. So it basically sends you down, and uh, spoilers, you encounter a shark, because the thing is named Shark Encounter. Oh, so okay. I'm not going like, <laughs> to... Well, there you go. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like you can, you guys can probably check out some of the YouTube videos on this. People get scared when they see this shark, and it like completely bites off half of the cage and like, ah. <laughs> you know, this is cool. this came out like you have to imagine this came out like right after the shark got in the cage yeah uh, that youtube yeah. video that went viral yep. oh really i yeah. didn't see this the, video oh well, you gotta check i it gotta out. see this video a shark gets into a cage anyway uh so it's terrifying but it's also really serene like at one point the power goes out and you're like in the darkness in the depths and like you're looking around and you see all these bioluminescent jellyfish floating oh, that's, around you that's true it's pretty cool whoa and okay. the music yeah it's it's pretty neat uh so let's talk about VR luge um do we have to no nah, like- it was boring i didn't like it and, yeah and it had a really hard time with uh visuals like it was re- like the resolution on this thing was really bad. That's a little surprising cuz it seems pretty simple. But, By you the know, way, I to all know. our <sighs> fans who are luge fans out there, we don't knock the sport we just knock the experience we had in a vr game yeah we love all of our fans who love losing love losing? i would love to see the venn diagram of losers who also listen to human factors cast oh that would be it's awesome probably pretty big man oh really? yeah 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 i mean like <laughs> our luge population is gonna isn't go luge the same thing as bob's wild team <laughs> it, our <laughs> luge population is gonna go up wildly after this show airs <laughs> human factors uh, has a bobsled team all right so Danger Ball. This one, Danger this one, this is the 3D Pong, uh, which this one was very underrated. Like, not a whole lot of people are talking about this, and they should. This is awesome. You control, like, imagine Pong, right? Yeah, your yeah. little, your little, uh, like, what, the little blocker, bumper, yeah. the bumper. Uh, you control that with your head. Um, oh, really? And you can do cool little things too, like, like you're looking around and you're controlling this thing, and like, um, you know, as uh, as the ball's coming at you, you can. Butt your head forward, and it will send the ball back faster. Um, oh, so it can you use your hands too? You no, no, it's okay. just your head. What was your question, Blake? Does it accelerate based on how you move? It does. Oh, that's cool. So, oh. and check this out. So, like, if you you can put like a curve ball on it, if you move your head uh, as it's coming in, and you make the ball sort of wipe across your bumper, you can send it back in a curve ball fashion. And if you push it forward and do um, off to the side, you send it back really fast in a curveball fashion and it's really cool as the ball hits the sides of the playing field like some of the panels break off and fall you're like in this big arena it's so cool it's so cool <laughs> i just want to let all the listeners to know nick is making some awesome head motion oh this man this yeah. guy yeah. is like so fun. excited about this it looks amazing it sounds amazing all right let's talk about london heist okay this thing was cool really that's i it? dug it i dug it uh it was really cool uh it was one of those experiences it's kind of um uh, similar to Batman, where you have this aha moment. You have this moment where you are, um, you finally realize, oh wow, they're shooting at me. I got to duck, and you duck behind this like 
uh, cabinet in which you're stealing the diamond from. Oh man! And, oh, then, so cool. and then you have to shoot back, and then when you reload, you have to duck back under the cabinet. It's really and you have to reload with your hands, like you have to pick up a clip. You have to pick up the there. clip, put it in. It's what? really cool. And yeah. then there's one point. That sounds awesome. There's one point when you're like getting away in a vehicle, and they're driving, and you like open up the door and shoot behind you, and like shoot the wheels off of motorcycles, and they're flipping over and blowing up in front of you. It's really. cool. And it's, it's cool. And you know, that's the thing. I really think that's the core idea of VR is the idea of, living, like you said, living those fantasies. And the, yeah. come on, what grown, red-blooded American hasn't wanted to be part of a heist? Well, yeah. I mean, my first-person shooter nutcase, so I would love to do that. That sounds right? awesome. Everybody yeah. wants to be in part uh, of a heist. Oh, it was yeah. really neat. Heist it up. The last one on PlayStation VR Worlds was Scavenger's Odyssey, and this is, uh, you're basically an alien in a mech. Uh, mm, monster. I know. You wanted to play this one, and I was so I disappointed. I wanted to be a like, mech pilot. You know what? The theme of these last couple of weeks has just been disappointment with all the YouTube problems. And <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's a group and, disappointment. This is just the Billy disappointment. No, this here. is my disappointment, too, because I feel like I failed you, man. Like, I, he wanted to will... record me of a video of flailing around in a mech going, Look, yeah. Here we go. So good. Look, we'll get you. So good we, will, there. we will get you in a mech soon enough, man. <laughs> um, no, the story was interesting it's broken up into two parts all these experiences were really short um and i think i think it's designed that way but most Probably of these games how now. much were they like psvr worlds comes with the psvr yeah but it's like 40 bucks if you don't okay um, but what, other than those things I mean, um Valkyrie let's see going to be 60 60 which um, is a little much for me i think russia blood was uh, until dawn russia blood was 20 batman right. vr was 20 thumper right. was 20 rigs i think is 20 rigs is 60 really yeah so okay. what is rigs rigs is a uh, you so i mentioned this earlier this is the one that gave me a little bit of motion sickness but this one is the uh, mechs doing sports <laughs> oh okay it's like yeah. it's literally basketball in a mech yeah. Um, so you crazy. say yeah. I wasn't crazy about it. Nah. I, you know what though? I think about it this way. I think that's just a visual get thing, versus the idea of like actually being, you know, a mech. It's like I'm just a robot dude playing basketball. You know what I'm saying? Personally, I think, I'd rather have the alien experience in the mech than yeah. Be ball. That man. one was pretty cool because you're like you're jumping in zero G's onto other asteroids from asteroid to asteroid. It's pretty cool. Me- uh, rigs. It's just on the playing field. I th- it's it seems I don't know. Robot right? golf was better. I didn't play robot golf. Oh. Um, oh. <laughs> Looks good. I've seen some things for it. Okay. Last of all, we got to move on a little bit, but last of all, I want to talk about the social aspect. Okay. Um. So, uh, how did you feel, Billy, when you played this? Uh, it was a very solo experience. It's isolating. It's very isolating, it's which was isolating. a little uncomfortable at times, to be honest. With oh, you. really? But I mean. So here's Isolation. the thing. Yeah, here's the thing. I like sat and I played all the way through Batman VR, and it was like two o'clock in the morning by the time I was done. Uh-huh. And I realized, wow, no one's no one's by me. Like if I, it was it was just like wow. I feel like I just had this really visceral experience, and I have no one to share it with. It was right. so isolating. Um, yeah, because you can't really describe all that to anybody who hasn't experienced right. it. Too. You have to yeah. put them in the even, headset. Even if they have to succeed. Yeah, yeah. Even if they're watching on the screen, they don't understand. Oh, no. for sure. Um, but. I will say it is doing wonders for couch co-op. How uh, so? So in these single-player experiences, it's not doing that much. But in couch co-op, in a game like Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, which is another game that nobody's talking about right now because it's been out for a while on other platforms. Like two years, I think. Yeah, yeah, but that thing's amazing. That's a great game. You sit there and you try to disarm a bomb and you have no idea how to disarm the bomb, but everybody in person knows how to disarm the bomb because they have the manual sitting in front of them. And so they have to relay this information to you and uh, you have to listen to it. Yeah, it's like a team building exercise, right? right Jake yeah. and I were talking about this earlier. Yeah, that's like something that Microsoft used because I've played this before, like not in VR, but that's kind of sweet to bring that just... I don't know, game board night to the next level, right? Yeah, right, 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 cool. right, right. Um, they also have, uh, there's potential with online experiences, though. So there's this game called Sports Bar. I haven't bought it yet, but it's basically like, a, it's literally just a bar where you can do anything and, and you can kind of like stack tables on the, uh, or start, sorry. It's a social venue. Yeah, it's like you stack uh, chairs on a table if you want to or see how many cups you can stack up or or play darts or play pool or just like. Wait, wait, wait. You, you can know. play pool in VR? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Sold? I'm a PS4 right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. You heard it here first. Um, so the thing about it is is that I, one of the things I wanted to bring up with the social aspect of yeah. it is I really feel like we were talking about this the other day when we were doing the VR experience. 
I really feel that the social aspect is one of the biggest draws to the idea of vir virtual reality. Because I can play an MMO and I can be who, whatever I want in the MMO. But I mean, like, especially with things like, um, especially things like uh, Ready Player One, like we talked about earlier. You want you can your oasis. Get, I want my oasis. I want to be able to be anything I want. I want to live that, I hate to say it, but like a second life type of life, but in a VR experience. But not second life. And but without not all second the life. Not the weird not, flat well, stuff. I mean, yeah, none of that stuff. I mean, you know, each to their own, but. The idea of like, no, 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 I want to be like six feet tall and I want to have rock hard ass and I want to be a troll, you know, things like that, you know? Skankon 69. <laughs> but I mean, like, that was the idea. It's a South Park reference. And then like, <laughs> like, like the idea of Ready Player One is what everyone's trying to go for. It's what people, what scientists like Nick here is trying to go for. And if you're interested in Ready Player One, you can go to audibletrial.com backslash human factors cast and get that book for free. That's shameless it. plug. Audibletrial.com it's not shameless. They're, backslash human factors cast. They're helping us out. Yeah. Um, all right. So, you know, what do you what do you guys, our listeners, think? Did we miss a game that you want to hear about? Did we say, were we too harsh with this thing? You know, were we too nice? Yeah, right. Let us know in the comments or send us an email. That's got to be it for today. If you want to be featured on the show, we're all over social media. Go ahead and comment on our SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter, or send us an email at humanfactorscast at gmail.com with all your questions. You can also get to the front of the question line uh, by supporting us on our Patreon site at patreon.humanfactorscast.com slash humanfactorscast. Be sure to like, subscribe, and review us on iTunes, the Google Play Store, SoundCloud, or your favorite podcast directory. Please make those reviews good. It helps us out. We're always trying to keep in touch with interesting topics that our listeners want to hear about on the show, so feel free to suggest a way. I want to thank Blake Arnstor for being a permanent fixture on the show. Yay! Oh, he's finally made it. Blake, where can our listeners find you? Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at UXChillBro. As always, Mr. Billy Hall, Hello. thank you. Where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter or on YouTube at Comstar Cleric. As for me, I've been your host, Nick Rome. You can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore Rome. Thanks again for tuning in to Human Factors Cast. Till next time, it, it depends! depends.